I'm just starting up in this mix here. And one of the first things I like to do when I'm sort of getting like a project into shape is I'll create makeshift VCA faders for certain instruments in the mix. And for those who don't know already, a VCA fader is one fader that controls a group of other faders. Unfortunately, Cakewalk doesn't have VCA fader functionality by default. However, by using Cakewalk's grouping features, you can sort of create makeshift VCA faders. So in this video, I'll show you how to make these. I'll show you how to automate them. And I'll just explain why I think you should use them. And I'll show you how I set them up, which is a little bit different to some other people. But yeah, it's a personal choice, but hopefully this will give you some tips. So before we go any further, I'll just play through what we've got here. It's a 10 channel drum recording, one bass channel and a stereo guitar guide. So yeah, nothing too excessive. There's a, a few console one instances on the kick and the snare. There is this Boz plus 10 dB compressor ringing in parallel and a couple of reverbs. So yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy yet. What we're going to concentrate on here when we're making this VCA fader is the snare channels. And what we have is a snare top, a snare bottom, a snare bus, which is a summed signal of the snare top and snare bottom, snare NY, which is a snare parallel compression, and two snare reverbs. So the most common thing to do in this situation would be to group or create a VCA fader that controls the snare top and the snare bottom. And whilst that's fine, there are a few problems with doing that. And the main one being, if you change the snare top fader or the snare bottom fader, you're then changing the signal that is going into this compressor and the reverbs and any compression you've got on the bus is also being affected. So what I'll do is, I'll just play through this track again and I'll bring up this compressor and just keep an eye on the VU meter here. As I move the snare top and snare bottom channels, you will see the needle react differently. So yeah, you might not think that's a problem and it might not be a problem if that's how you like to work. But where that's an issue for me is assume that I'm close to the end of a mix and I just want to make the snare quieter. Just want to bring it down a few decibels. So I'll go to the snare channels and bring them down. Two minutes later, I realize that my snare compression sounds different. My snare reverb sounds different. And just the general drum mix sounds completely different. I'm not really sure what I've done because all I've done is brought the snare down. So if you set up a VCA channel to control the snare bus and all the snare effects returns, you bypass this problem. You're not affecting these levels which are feeding the processors. You're, uh, you are changing the returns and the bus which comes after all of the processing. So you're just bringing the volumes down at the end of the chains. So the first thing we're going to do is, is we're going to add an audio track. We'll bring this along to here. 
and I like to have my VCA channels narrow. I'm going to change this to white. I'm just going to call this snare VCA. And the reason I like to make these narrow is it's just easy, easier to identify them when I'm going through the, the mixer panel. So yeah, like I mentioned before, the main reason of setting the VCA up to record, to control the effects returns and the bus is that it doesn't affect any parallel compression, any reverb sends or any bus processing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click on this fader and go to group manager. We will pick the group E, which is purple. We will then change absolute to relative. And all that does is make sure that the, the sort of volume levels between group members stays relative. Then in attributes, we will just call this snare VCA. Then click OK. You've now created a snare VCA group and now we can start adding the members. Just right click on all the faders you want to add. Just like so. So that's us got the snare bus, the snare parallel compression, two snare reverbs and this VCA fader in the one group. So now when I move this fader, you'll be able to see it control every other fader. Pretty straightforward. If you want to move any member individually, all you have to do is hold down control and you get individual control over that group member. So what I'll do is I'll play through the track again. I'll start moving the VCA fader and then I'll move things individually. And what I'll do eventually is I'll bring it, bring up that compressor again. And if you just keep an eye on the needle, you'll see how things aren't being affected this time. The compression is staying consistent and it's just simply affecting the volume. So yeah, hopefully you'd be able to hear and see there that the reverb was staying consistent. All that was happening was it was coming down in volume and the compression needle was staying the same regardless of what the group members were set to. Because like I said, this is coming after any processing. It's not happening before. So what we're going to do now is we're going to automate this group. Like I mentioned before, because Cakewalk isn't set up to do this by default, there are a few ways to get around this. There's a few things you have to do. So we'll go back to the track panel and say we want to just make the snare louder or quieter. You would think that if you just click the right button on this snare VCA track, we could just start writing in automation. So I'll play through the track again and it will sound like it's doing what you should do, but you'll see what the issue is after the fact. So I'm sure you'll agree that sounded right, but if you have a look at the other channels, the automation hasn't been copied over and if we play through it, you'll see that 
the other faders do not respond to the automation even though we've made this group. Yeah, you might think that makes these VCA groups somewhat pointless. I did as well at first, until I realised that you could just simply group the right buttons on each track. So what you want to do now is right click and hit group manager. We will pick the green N for this. We'll change it to relative once again. We'll then go to attributes and we'll call this snare right. Now you've got this channel set up, all you have to do is add all the channel's right buttons to this group. So that's the snare VCA being added. Snare verb 2. Snare verb 1. Snare, Parallel Compression, and Snare, Bus. So just delete this automation and we'll do it again and you'll see the difference this time. So yeah, as you can see, the automation nodes and lines have been copied across each track that is in the right group and I'll just play through this one more time so you can hear how everything is responding. So yeah, that's about it. One other thing to mention here, I guess, is these VCA channels don't necessarily have to make them. You can just create a group between the channels you want to control at once. I just prefer having one channel for visual feedback. So say I want to make the snare quieter. I just look for the narrow white strip next to the snare channels and I know exactly where I'm going. It just keeps things a bit more organized for me so yeah hopefully this has been a bit helpful and if you've got any questions just give me a shout and i'll try and get back to you